Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Sister Power's vision is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. Sister Power welcomes referrals to interview industry leaders, professionals, thought-provoking people who enjoy showcasing what you know about empowering and motivating women. Sister Power airs twice a month on Thursday at 4 p.m. Email Sister Power host Sharon Thomas Yarbrough at sistersempoweringhawaii at gmail.com. This afternoon, Sister Power topic of discussion, healing through writing, how to release pain and step into your purpose. Sister Power VIP guest is Kimberly K. LeBou. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here. Thank you. And uh, we're, it's all about healing um, through writing. Yes. You're a published author. Tell us yes. a little bit about yourself. I am a, a published author of many titles now. Um, I am a mother of two great sons. And I'm a owner, a owner and CEO of Labu Publishing Enterprise. I'm also a speaker and uh, a mentor to many, and a uh, certified life coach as well. Yes. Certified life coach. Yes. So what are you coaching people about? I mainly coach women through the process of divorce. So my, I'm a Christian divorce coach. So that's a little different, but um, I coach women through the process of divorce. I also coach in other areas too, through the book writing process, which we're gonna talk about today. Um, but yeah, just helping women to succeed and overcome through life's challenges. And you know, that's, that's a different subject where we talk about divorce, mm -hmm. divorce yes. and being a Christian. Exactly. Uh, my father was a minister of, mm -hmm. of over 40 years. Wow. And there's so many different subjects that the church kind of, you know, they kind of back away from, and divorce is one, and, yes. and I think racism is another mm -hmm. one, and homosexuality is one, right. and I think that's just something that people should realize that our Heavenly Father wants us to be happy. Exactly. And you do exist without um, going through divorce. You still, exactly. you, you, you could make it. There is words. life after divorce. There is life after <laughs> divorce because he wants us to be happy. And mm -hmm. I, you know, you don't want to go through domestic violence right. or someone betraying you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm so happy about having you here, I am a co-author okay. of a book, Gifts of Hope. And when oh, you wow. were talking about the three foot, we're going to talk about your book. Okay. And when you talked about church, the name of my um, topic is betrayal in church. Wow. Yes, people, there is betrayal in church. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so this was very special mm -hmm. with me, and the name of this book is, is Gifts of Hope. And mm -hmm. I'm excited about talking about, you know, let's chat about your new book. And, yes. and we can talk about, it's right here, Threefold Cord Broken, mm -hmm. What Happens When Christian Marriages Fail. Yes. So how were you inspired to write that book? Well, I've had several failed marriages. <laughs> and you're still smiling. And there's a story behind each one of them, which is told in the book. And I found that through those processes, going through divorce, and especially going through divorce as a Christian woman, that I didn't always feel like I had the support that I needed, um, especially from within the church. And so it became a source of contention with me almost. And so I wanted to be that person that was there for other women. Once I cleared that journey, and I've you know been through it, unfortunately, more than once, um, I know what it takes to make it through and come out on the other side successfully. So when I thought about the concept of a threefold cord broken, I first started writing it about my story. And then it just wasn't happening. I kept putting it down. And then God gave me the vision that it wasn't just about me. 
And so then I opened it up and invited the six other women, the co-authors of A Threefold Court Broken, to join me to tell their stories about how our marriages started, because we all started with the fairy tale, Yeah. Um, what went wrong, and then what was the process of us walking through that divorce, and then how God brought us out and still uses us and blesses us on the other side, so that people can know that God hates divorce, but He does not hate us, no. and He will find every every avenue to, to use all that and turn it around for your good. And so that's what the a Threefold Core Broken is really about. And, and you know, I noticed at your, um, the back of your book uh -huh. that it really resonated with me. And it, you say, I am honored uh -huh. that you invested your time in our experience. Our stories were respectfully told from yes. our perspective. Exactly. And that needs to be shared. Yes. You know, that is. And what I l enjoyed about your book as uh -huh. well, once I read it, that the women that were telling their stories, they weren't bashing men. Exactly. And, and that's what th I think people should exactly. know. Yes. It's just telling the truth. Uh -huh. and, and Mm -hmm. telling, laying out the map what happened right. during their journey. And like I said, it was told from our perspective, and I wanted to make that clear because there, what they say is three sides to every story, yes. his, oh. his, hers, and the truth <laughs> somewhere in between. <laughs> right. And uh, so I wanted to make that very clear that these were our experiences, and, and you know, our perception is our reality sometimes. And. I wanted it to be clear that, no, we were not man bashing. We weren't like tearing our husbands apart in this book. We were merely sharing our experience. And when I looked for the women to participate in the project, one of the criteria was that they were healed and on the other side of it, and that they could not be bitter and angry when they were telling their stories. So I was, because how can you help somebody else to overcome if you're still, you know, stuck in the bitterness of it all? And so the women that I chose were on the other side of the journey, and I felt their stories would be a blessing to other women everywhere. And how many women, again? It was seven? Six, six, six women? In, seven, including and me. Seven, including mm -hmm. you. And the, the book that, it was 102 of us telling our story. Wow. So, you know, what <laughs> What I enjoyed about your book, because you couldn't tell everything with 500 words. I mean, right. that's what you were given. Exactly. And they had a chance to really express themselves mm -hmm. and, and walk us from the, the beautiful time when you first met yes. to the end. Exactly. It's like wow. I said, we all start out with the fairy tale. Yeah. <laughs> so how many books have you written? I have written eight. Seven of them are actually published. One is the workbook for a mentoring program that I used to run in Maryland. Is that where you're from? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Maryland. All right. <laughs> now, you have a, you, you own a publishing company. Yes. Tell us about yes. Laboo Publishing Enterprises. Laboo Publishing Enterprise is my newest baby. I'm so excited about the company. What happened was after I wrote A Threefold Core Broken, and traveled back to Maryland to do the book launch and everything. When I got back home, it was as if God was like laying everything before me and had me to write all of the books that I had written on a piece of paper, and then all of the people that I had helped to write books through my um, book, uh, Boot, <laughs> boot camp, yeah. writers boot camps um, to produce authors. And there were so many people that I had helped through that journey. But then he was like, your brand isn't on any of it. And it's time for that to stop. And so from that, he gave me Laboo Publishing Enterprise. And like I said, I'm so proud that it has my dad's name. I'm honored. I feel like it's a part of the legacy for our family. And, um, and we just published our first author out of Laboo Publishing Enterprise. So we well, let's just, show that book. Yeah. What's the name? What is the name of that book? To Me With Love, A Devotional on Healing, Pampering, and Loving Yourself. Oh, so yeah. you show it right to that camera. To this To camera. Me With Love, A mm -hmm. Devotional on Healing, Pampering, and Loving Yourself. Yes. And that's so, so important. So we're so excited. Yeah. So because if you don't love yourself, how mm -hmm. can you love someone else? Exactly. And I'm glad you did bring up the, um, the word brand. And I mm -hmm. always tell people mm -hmm. that the minute you walk out the door, you represent your brand. Exactly. Absolutely. And it's so important, and so that's why I'm just so excited about the publishing company, um, that I finally have something that, um, I mean, I have many things that I've been proud of over the years, but I feel like this is my legacy. That's this your baby. The, yeah, and it carries my family name, and so I'm just so honored to have Laboo Publishing Enterprise. It's oh. like I already had all the tools and all of the, the right resources that I have been using for years, and now I can pull that together and help other people to tell their stories and become published authors well. well. I'm excited. I'm yes. excited about the project you and I are going to work <laughs> yes. with. Yes, you know, I'm you, excited you have a about surprise. that as well. Yeah, you yes. surprise me with something wonderful. <laughs> and so I, so everyone, look, pay attention to Laboo. 
and Sheen Sisters Impress. Empowering yes. Hawaii. That's awesome. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, that's. We have a heart-shaped crystal bowl here, oh. and our viewers <laughs> have asked a few questions. Okay. So let's start off, and I'm going to ask okay. you this question, mm -hmm. and it says, if you could tell your younger writing self anything, mm -hmm. what would it be? To not be fearful of what others might think about your writing, because your story is your story and no one gets to dictate how you tell that story because it's yours and yours alone. I love you know, that. A lot of people fear what other people are gonna think. Like, who wants to hear what I have to say? You know, why is what I have to say important? What you have is very important. What you have to say is very important because those are your life experiences, and I don't think any experience in our lives is wasted. So we go through it in order to be able to help other people. And Maya Angelou said, when you learn, teach. And so, to not be fearful of our own stories and to get out there and tell it and to help somebody else. And you're get right, their you know, healing through writing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was betrayed, I'm so glad that my girlfriends talked me into writing the story. Yeah. And I feel so much better. You do. You just release it. It's a release, it. yes. It you release that all on paper. You get it from out of your head and out of your heart and you pour it out on paper. And it's just such a healing process. And that, that's what it has done for me. It's just been such a healing process. And I didn't start out as a writer. I was not that little girl who wrote all the time. I didn't write until I was 35. Oh! <laughs> well, that was only a few years yeah, ago. About 12 or so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Well, let's yes, see. Yes, let's yes. get another question okay. and see. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just, we, here it is okay. again. If you didn't write, what would you do for work? Speaking. I love to speak. I love the stage. I love empowering women. Uh, that would be my thing. It's sort of what I do anyway, but I love to speak from the stage. You love and so to speak. if I'm not writing it, I'm speaking it and empowering, doing conferences and that sort of thing. So yes. And all over the world, you mm -hmm. are you're an international yes. speaker. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's yeah, wonderful. I told you about the experience in Ghana, so that was my yeah. Okay, well we when we come there, back. Yes. Okay. We're going to talk about your experience in Ghana. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Stay tuned. All right. All right. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. That kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. The truth is I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Thanks. I was so young to understand what it means. I could wait till I could be 17. One in three teens who smoke will lose years of these moments. It's your life. Don't miss a thing. Welcome back to Sister Power. I'm here with my VIP guests, Kimberly Labou, and our topic for discussion is healing through writing. Yes. You're an author, an international speaker, and before we went on break, we were talking about you speaking all over the world, mm -hmm. and you were sharing a beautiful story that when you and a friend of yours, mm -hmm. no, you met her in Ghana. Yes. Tell us about that, and tell, tell us about the book. So I went to Ghana as a part of, it's an organization called Leap for Ghana. And we went there as a part of a global literacy conference that they held. And we were going to teach the teachers there and empower them with new skills that they could use to teach in the villages of Ghana. And so my roommate, whom I did not meet until I went to Ghana, uh, we were there, we worked with the kids, we were so deeply touched by all of those experiences there. And they had a library that they were just building, but they did not have many books that had children that looked like the kids that were in the village. And so when we came back, we started talking about this book on the trip, and we figured we would do this ABC book where we took a tour through the village, we bought things in the village and toured with the kids, and we wrote C is for Coco. C, and C is, is for Coco. Yeah. Show the— And C is for Coco is— um, 
cocoa is uh, big in Ghana, so that's like the second manufacturer of cocoa in the world. So Ooh. that's why C, for, C is for cocoa. And the kids there were just such a dear, and you see like pictures of the kids on oh. the back. And uh, so, yeah, so we came back and we put this book together featuring the children that we actually were with in the village. And as a part of it, we send these books back to the village and we just sent a hundred copies back to the village. Uh, my co-author, Caroline, called me to tell me the other day and I was so excited that we get to send it back and the kids that are actually in the book will be able to see themselves in this book and it's just an incredible incredible feeling so oh I'm yeah that touches my heart <laughs> my girlfriend who is also the vice president of June Dennis of Sisters mm -hmm. in Par and Kauai is leaving for Africa are wow. there additional copies that she could take a few with her I don't know when she's leaving but we can We'll, we can talk we'll, about we'll it, make figure it, it out, happen. see if we can make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be yeah. wonderful. Absolutely. I love paying it forward. Yes, that would now, be great. All right, now let's okay. ask more questions okay. from our viewers. They were so viewers. excited to hear that you're coming <laughs> on the show. All right, speaking of your book, A Threefold Chord mm -hmm. Broken, What Happens When Christian Marriages Fail? Mm -hmm. What did you edit out of this book? I actually didn't edit much out of the book because my direction to the women was to be real and to be authentic. And the fact that, like I said before, we um, put out that we were looking for people that were already on the healing side of it, that had already um, did the work <laughs> mm. to come through on the healing side of it. There wasn't much to edit out of the book at all. Um, because that was the whole point of it, was, was for them to authentically tell their stories so that it could impact someone else. And so I wanted them to be real. All right, tell us how, how may our viewers purchase book. your book? It's available on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon.com, or of course they can go to Labu Publishing Enterprise and, and purchase it from there as well. But yeah, it's on there, and it's also on the um, ChristianDivorceCoach.com, which is the, the Christian Divorce website. All right. This is wonderful. Here's another question. Okay. Do you have an editorial team? Yes, I do. <gasps> we have all of the resources that are need, needed to make the book happen. So I always tell people, you write the book and we do the rest. So the editing, the cover design, um, the format and layout, everything that it takes to get it done and then to have it published and put on Amazon and other booksellers as well. Oh, so, I'm yeah, excited. Full service. <laughs> I'm full service. I'm full excited. Service. Yes. All right. What's the best way to market your books? The best way to market your book is to consider your book as a business, really, because it's so much more to it than writing the book and just smacking it on Amazon. Um, for speakers in particular, it's a great way to leave a piece of you with the audience. And so I always tell my speakers in the industry, it's like, if you don't have a book, you're leaving money on the table. Because when you get up there and you give this extraordinary speech, yes. people want to take a piece of you with them. And if you have that book in hand, you can, you can sell that from the back of the room. I remember speaking at um, the Blacks in Government National Training Conference one year, and it was a room, it was just a, it was 100 women, but 76 of those women purchased my book at the end. So if you have nothing to give oh. as an extension of yourself, you're just missing an opportunity. So, you know, now it's so easy to market because you have social media, things that weren't around so many years ago. Yes. You have social media, you have YouTube, you just have so many avenues, but setting up those marketing plans and just uh, figuring it out and going for it, you really just have to put the work in, do the time, put the time I, in. I love that. Yeah. You're giving Absolutely. such great <laughs> advice. Thank you. And, what advice would you give to someone who wants to write a book for the first time? I would say start writing. Start writing. <laughs> so simple. I always tell people nothing happens until you write. People say, I want to write a book, but I don't know where to begin. I'm like, have you started writing? No. That's the hardest part. Like I said, you write the book, we'll take care of the rest. So my, my tip for a writer, a new writer, is to just start writing. Uninhibited, just write. Never try to write your second draft first. You know, the second draft is there for a reason. Oh. The first draft is unedited. And I just go for it. Write what you want to write. It doesn't have to be all neat and pretty in a package. We can pull it together and figure out how it's all supposed to work together later on down the line. But just start writing. I always admire authors and artists and mm -hmm. painters because you start with a blank sheet of blank paper. Slate. Yeah. 
And it's so amazing the, the yeah. work that you put in, and it comes out to be mm -hmm. such a remarkable story. Absolutely. Telling tool. Absolutely. All right, well, let's keep this movie. Okay. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm learning as well. How have you found healing through writing? It's interesting. When I first started writing, it was after my second marriage ended. And after that marriage, I was really bitter and I was angry. And I was stuck in a state of unforgiveness. And so I had to work that thing out on the altar, praying, and God told me to write. And I was like, but I don't want to write. Yeah. And, but when I began to write, I found out that I was starting to release so much stuff and things that I had buried mm -hmm. from childhood. Everything started to come up. And sometimes it's a hard process in the beginning, but when you just continue to write, it's where the healing is because you're getting that stuff out. You're getting those emotions out instead of holding them down on the inside. And so for me, you know, to be able to tell my story, to be able to share my stories in these books, um, through speaking and coaching and writing, is just a blessing to me because I feel like it wasn't all for naught, like it was not wasted, that mm -hmm. everything that I went through was not in vain. Yes. And so that has really been a great healing process for me, and it's allowed me to just flourish and to, to live this beautiful life that I have now. And so and it's just a blessing. Oh, I love that. Because, you know, I learned so much with um, writing about mm -hmm. my uh, experience, mm -hmm. betrayal in church. Yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it. Right. Because I, exactly. it was all about growth, yes. all about forgiving, yes. and, and, and just keeping it real. Exactly. Keeping it real. <laughs> exactly. All right. What is the most unethical practice in the publishing industry? The most unethical. Ethical. I would say if someone was trying to steal people's ideas, but... I try to tell my authors not to even worry about that mm -hmm. because your experiences are yours. So even if somebody tries to steal your title, oh. you know, people are like, I don't, I don't want to put my title out on social media because somebody might, might steal my title. But it's your story that's connected yeah. to that title. And if it wasn't what God gave them, then that's not going to work out. So don't worry about somebody stealing your work or stealing your title because your story is authentically yours and it can only be told in the way that you would tell it by you. You're such a good oh. motivational speaker <laughs> and you. a coach because Thank this is you. what you really need mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah. So you place them in, in the comfort zone. Exactly. That's exactly. important. All right. Yeah. Well, let's keep this okay. school going. What does literary success look like to you? Literary success to me is, is what I'm already doing. Um, being able to write myself and then being able to coach other people through the writing process, being able to help women primarily to see that you can tell your story and to help them do that and then see them empowered. Like the authors that were in a threefold core broken, some of them were first time authors. I think all but one was, for, was a first time author. And, um, you know, encouraging them through that process and then getting to the book launch and them seeing a room full of people oh. that came out to support us in just exhilarating. Sure. So, so that fuels me because I'm seeing other people to flourish and grow and it's just exciting. It's, <laughs> it's a exciting. feel good feeling. So to me, yeah, so to me that's success, being able to, to not only write, but to be able to help other people to write, and then of course to be able to now open up my own publishing company is just incredible. So that's what literary success well, looks, like, you, looks like to me. Well, did you take journalism classes? I did not. I did not. And that's what people need to know. A couple of writing know. classes, but uh, no, not, <laughs> not okay. no. No, I did not. So, you know, and when you're, unless you're planning, like, if you're going to write fiction and or heavier genres of work where you need to do a lot of research and all that stuff, you know, that might come into play. But when you're telling your story, it's authentically yours, so you don't need I all like of that. I like that. I like that. Do you view writing as a kind of spiritual practice? Absolutely. Absolutely. I journal. I have my journal. Okay. And How many journals, journals do you have? You know, I have one big favorite journal of mine. It's nice leather with a nice little uh, leather tie. And, you know, I have many others, but that's yes. my favorite one right now. And I always tell, some, tell people to go get something that you really like. Like, go to Barnes & Noble and go in the journal section and get something that you enjoy cracking open and writing in. And everything in my journal is a letter to the Lord. Oh. 
-hmm. And so that's where, you know, I, I, I write out my heart to God. And it's amazing when I go back and read some of the stuff and see how far I've grown. So yeah, I do think that writing is a spiritual, a oh. great spiritual practice. Wow, great, yeah. all right. What's next on the horizon for you? More authors. Okay. <laughs> Birthing more authors, growing our publishing company is big on my list of things to do. And we also have the um, Writers Conference, the Hawaii Writers Conference that's coming up. Oh, tell us about the Writers yes. Conference. The Writers Conference is August the 25th and 26th in Kapolei at the hotel right there at the new mall. And uh, we're going to do the Writers' Conference, two-day Writers' Conference, where we're having the workshops. It's a retreat, actually, a, a writer's retreat, Hawaii writer's retreat. And just to come in and have the workshops and helping people to tell their stories, helping people to work through the process of writing, having dedicated writing time, because sometimes busy people just can't stop to write. So it's a place where we're going to do that. We have sunrise writing at the beach set up for that Sunday morning. Um, so this is going to be an incredible experience. So yeah. it's August? August the 25th and 26th. So that's a Saturday and Sunday? Yes. That's a, yep. And what Saturday time does it start Sunday. and what time does it end? 7 a.m. in the morning and then till I think 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. that next evening, that Sunday evening. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many. We have this heart full of questions <laughs> and, you know, Not I'm going to find, you know, one, one, okay. one last question okay. and then we'll just have to do part two okay. of um, healing through writing. Yes. What is the fastest and easiest way to send submissions to Labu Publishing Enterprise? Go to labupublishing.com. So go to our website, laboopublishing.com, and you can submit from there, or you can send us at staff at laboopublishing.com is the email address where if you go to the website, it tells you to send the sample submission so we can view your work. Well, in 10 seconds or less, mm -hmm. please tell our viewers something that we have left out that you would like to leave them with. Look right into that camera. Something I would like, okay. <laughs> I would like to leave people with um, the idea that you can write your story, you can tell your story. It's a powerful thing for you to do. Eliminate all fear, all doubt. The story belongs to you, so just go out there and tell it. And if you need help, Labu Publishing Enterprise is here to help you through that process. Oh, thank you so much. I thank you, appreciated Sharon. this time. And Everyone, thank you for tuning in and spending part of your day with Sister Power, Oceans of Aloha, peace and love.